Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Road to 2000. As always, my name is Caleb Denby, and tonight I want to have some fun. Uh, we're we're going to be a little bit less focused on improving your tournament chess, and a little bit more focused on uh, some fun chess p uh, puzzles and chess positions that have been composed throughout history. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to do this tonight is because uh, it's December. And with the holidays coming up, actually a number of chess sites always publish some really fun, some really interesting uh, chess puzzles that you can do. I think chess.com just released a, a puzzler uh, where mixed in with chess puzzles, they also have some, some fun, uh, other fun chess related questions. Like th there's a close up of somebody's beard and they ask you which famous chess player's beard is this, stuff like that. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. Um, I've also been really enjoying the Chess Advent Calendar by uh, Magnus Carlsen's uh, Chess Club. The name escapes me. It's uh, in Norwegian. Just search Advent of Chess and you'll, you'll find that one. Uh, and of course, Chessbase has been publishing uh, December puzzles for, for Christmas for, for years now. So in honor of all the wonderful chess puzzles, uh, being released, I wanted to go over some of the absolute longest puzzles that have ever been created, starting with the one on your screen right here. So this one dates all the way back to 1860, uh, and unfortunately, it is not a legal chess position. Um, we have the, the correct number of pieces, technically. Um, black has seven pawns and two dark square bishops. White has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight pawns and two dark square bishops. So that, that's why it's pretty clearly illegal. You know, can't get two dark square bishops and have all eight of your pawns. Uh, but it was composed way back in 1860 by Otto Blathy. It is, I think, affectionately named Monster for how kind of grotesque it is. But uh, this position here is actually mate in 290 moves. So this is the one I'm going to use to introduce these kinds of puzzles and try and understand how exactly uh, anything can be 290 moves long and still solved by, by humans. So I'm going to give you the first couple moves for free. Um, but first, let's just take stock of what's going on in, in the position here. So black has a lot of pieces kind of jumbled up around here, but none of them can, can really move. Right, This rook on c8 is essentially trapped by its own pieces. Same with this bishop, uh, trapped by the own pieces here. Uh, and this knight uh, could, could potentially move. Uh, and this rook could potentially move. And this bishop could potentially move. Uh, we also have this knight to worry about. And so we have to solve sort of all of these problems and, and get black stuck. So that, that's our first order of business. So to start with, rook d1 check is going to be the first move of the puzzle. Uh, black has to block. There's no other legal move. And then after c4 check and king d6, it's looking a lot more like uh, black's pieces are all incredibly stuck now, right? The knight and the rook can't legally move. As long as the knight and the rook can't move, the bishop on d8 can't move. As long as the bishop on d8 can't move, the, the rook on c8 could only capture on b8, which would give white a queen and allow white to checkmate. Uh, similarly, though, we can't really move either of these pieces because they're both also hemmed in. Uh, this bishop is stuck, making sure this rook can't escape. Uh, and now, and that just leaves this knight to take care of. So white's going to capture on g1. We get bishop c3. Rook back to d1 check, making sure this bishop can't do anything over here. Uh, bishop back to d4. And now we, we essentially have the, uh, the crux of the puzzle here. Those first four moves are just sort of the prelude to, to the actual puzzle. So the question is now, what can white do in order to, to win this position? And I'll give you a hint. It has to do with none of these pieces being able to move uh, without hanging something. So that's pretty much every piece that, that black has. So you don't need to give me a, you don't need to give me you know, the exact 290 move line. But let's, let's throw out some general ideas, see if we can solve this monster. So there is a chess term that this puzzle is going to revolve around, which you probably have heard of before. 
Uh, what was that? <laughs> yes. I've never heard it called z a Zuggy before. But yeah, Zugzvan, of course, is the idea. And that is how we're going to get these crazy move lengths in, in these kinds of puzzles. There's some sort of forced Zugzvang that we can get black in. Um, but because black has, for example, three H puns, uh, every time we force the Zugzvang position, he's only going to have to move upon one square up the board. So what, what's going to happen is we're going to find a cycle that we, can, that we can move in that gets black into Zugzvang. Then black has to move upon. Then we repeat the cycle to get black in Zugzvang again, and then again. And then again, and 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 a few more times until all of the pawns are gone. And then we're able to make progress uh, somewhere else once we've removed all of those pawns. So once again, I'm going to highlight all the pieces that can't move. The pawns we just discussed, they're there to sort of give black uh, extra moves in, in our cycle. So what piece is it going to revolve around? aside from the pawns for black. One of black's pieces I have not highlighted. The bishop on a8, right? And so the key to this position is going to be winning the bishop on a8 such that we can play a8 and make a queen. Uh, so now we have our general idea. We need to put black into Zugzvang, and then we need to be able to do that over and over and over again. The question now is how do we do it? How do we do it? So the chat's throwing out some ideas that, that aren't really Zugzwang based, but uh, anything you try to do, like b4 or f6 or anything like that, the fact of the matter is black just has way more pieces than white. And so you can sort of break the. Uh, the hold on the position, but it's not going to be favorable for you, and it's not going to be checkmate. Black is going to be the one breaking free, and then once these pieces can untangle, uh, maybe white's in trouble. Kind of, I, I, I don't know. Don't want to make too big of claims. So we need some way to put uh, black into Zugzwang. So I'll give you a hint. Imagine the current position, except it's black to move. Is black in Zugzwang? Now the chat says someone put this position into Stockfish. Uh, Stockfish can't help you here, I'm afraid. 270 is just just a hair outside of its uh, horizon. Or 290 even, made in 290. So I didn't get an answer. So imagine it's black to move here. Is this actually Zugzwang for black? If, it, if black had to move in this position, would he be zugged? Yeah, they would be, they would be yeah, zugged. And the reason is, again, none of these pieces can legally move. OK, besides the rook, beside the rook, but that would allow uh, white to queen. Um, you can't move this bishop, because our king on b6 is guarding the only square it would move to. And that's our eventual goal, is, is to capture the bishop. So that means black now has to push a pawn. And so this is actually the first step in the cycle, achieving this position with black to move. Uh, and so if you can figure that out, you've essentially solved the puzzle. Because then you just do that over and over again. You find a way to get this position with black to move over and over again. You just repeat the process, and, and then you win. Uh, so let's try to lose a tempo, shall we? So what happens if we move, well, first of all, if we move uh, any of these pieces, we break our, our lock on the position, right? We, we lose everything, 
f6 loses our e pawn. Our e pawn can't actually move. If we move this bishop, black again is, is escaping. If we move this bishop, black is capturing and again escaping. If we move this pawn, black is capturing and escaping with the king and then escaping with the other pieces. So none of these pieces are, are going to be good to move. That leaves us really with only two options. We've got a king left and, and a rook that we can move. So what happens, first of all, if we happen to move the rook? Black would no longer be zugged, right? Because this gives him an extra option. So what option is that? The bishop, exactly. So we needed our rook here to keep this bishop from moving. But uh, now, you know, something like bishop g7 would, would be possible. So the trick is um, the, we cannot actually lose a tempo with our king, because unfortunately we are bounded on a straight line here. So there's no way to triangulate, because you don't have any square connecting two other squares. So the trick now is going to be, can we use our king to keep this bishop from moving so that we can triangulate with the rook. And that is the core of this puzzle. And after that, you guys will have done it. You'll have solved a 290 move checkmate. So never say you can't calculate ever again. So just as a visual aid here, these are the squares our king can feasibly get to, uh, just because every other square on the board is, is attacked. I'm actually taking my jacket off here. It's a bit warm. So which of these squares look like they might be useful? Yeah, Brian? Uh, I mean, I, I, I was just thinking that being on c2 would take away one bullet. Right. So if the king is on c2 yeah. and we move our rook, just imagine the king's here, then bishop c3 wouldn't be possible. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, bishop g7, and then maybe the best you can do is come right back. And you have not lost a tempo, because you played rook f1, they played bishop g7, played rook d1, bishop d4. That's just repeating. Um, so c2 is not quite good enough. Not quite good enough. We need some way to keep this bishop from moving at all. And I mean, this bishop has a lot of options, f6, g7, h8. Um, maybe it can even go to e5. I don't actually know, but I, I suspect it can. So how can we possibly immobilize the bishop when it has so many squares to move to? Oh, OK, that's interesting. So what you say is true. What you say is true. So let's go ahead and put that on the board. By the way, um, just, just to, I don't know if I specifically mentioned this, but black is always passing with bishop b7. Oh, yeah. Right, so uh, I don't know if this was actually apparent or not. Um, and the point is we're trying to, to lose a tempo so that we can play king b6 in this position, and black will not have the, the passing move. So black is passing. And our problem is, even if we come all the way down here with our king and then come all the way back up, we haven't lost a tempo. So we're ending up just, just repeating the position. right? So th that's why we're trying to lose a tempo, so we can try to win this bishop. Um, so king b1, and then you wanted to play rook d3, which is now possible. You are correct. Uh, but the issue is, yeah. after bishop a8, you have not lost a tempo still. If rook d2 were possible, then you could lose a tempo by coming back in two steps. 
But the best you can do is play rook back to d1. And again, just to show you haven't lost the tempo, if I come all the way back up, all we've done is repeat. So b1 and c2, not good enough. OK, so the chat is pointing out something interesting. When the king is on d3, the bishop can legally move, but you have a discovered attack with the king if the bishop moves. Uh, the bishop on d4, I mean. So if we put the king on d3, though, the question is, why can't black just continue to pass? Or maybe he can. You guys are really close, really close. Almost solved all 290 moves, or at least the first 280. What'd you say? Yep, about 285 more before checkmate. <clears throat> But you're almost there, believe it or not. Do we bring our king down and then take the bishop? That way the bishop can't move anymore. Which bishop? Uh, I, I was thinking the d4 bishop. Uh, so where do you want to put the king? Uh, to prevent. OK, so the king on b1, yeah. and then take the bishop? It's just an idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that looks similar to the b4 ideas, where you're, you, know, you, you give yourself like, an option to play b4 and c5 after you take the bishop, or c5 or something. But once this pawn disappears, then the king comes out. Once the king comes out, then the knight, then the bishop, then the rook, then the other rook, then, then you're, you're stuck. So the sacrifice here is, is no good. Why not f6? If f6, you drop this pawn, and then again, the black pieces will flow. So maybe they put the king on b1, and then move the rook, for example, to h1. Yeah. And if he moves the bishop, for example, to, uh, to d7, we don't have to react because we can take our bishop Right, I agree. Um, so the, your point here is that you can continue to pass. Yeah, you can go somewhere else, and then in that way lose. Right, so, so you're onto something. Because if, he, if uh, black were to come straight back to d4, and you come back, then you have actually lost the tempo. Right? Here, here, bam, black to move. We've succeeded. Uh, but the problem is black can be a bit more clever and just play bishop f6, or bishop h8, or bishop c3, or probably even bishop e5. And so black will, will also not step back to the d4 square until you have uh, committed your rook to, to check. Yeah, these are good ideas. These are good ideas. I think the, the answer, once you see it, you, you'll realize it's not quite as clever as, as you're, uh, you're hoping for. So what does this bishop do on d4? It actually does something in, re really useful for black aside from prevent checkmate. It's helping black to try to stalemate himself by, by, getting, like, by giving up his bishop. Well, Actually, that's, that's kind of working in our favor. We want black to be almost stalemated um, so that we can force him into zugzwang, so black has to, to push the other things. All right, I'm going to make it really simple. It's, it's protecting those two pawns that maybe we could take with the king and right. another square. Exactly. Uh, so not only another square, but if one of these pawns disappears, black is actually going to get mated in three moves. So imagine the e3 pawn were off the board. Um, white's going to play e4, e5, 
checkmate. Uh, and there's, there's no stop in that, right? Uh, there, there's just there's nothing to do if the e-pawn isn't there. So it turns out this e3 pawn is really, really critical. And so we can use that to our advantage to immobilize the bishop. Which means we need to put our king on which square? Right. I Now, again, I might be speaking out of turn here, because I didn't check king e4. But uh, it doesn't matter. d3 is closer, so it takes less time. So of course, we achieve Zugzwang by placing our king onto d3, and now doing what? Our king is perfectly placed, so the bishop is immobilized. And that allows us to lose a tempo. So how do we lose a tempo? What was it all for? Move the rook, for example, to h1. Yep, rook h1, rook f1, rook, rook anywhere, basically. Uh, I think in the puzzle, we did rook e1. Uh, now, bishop c3, we would play king takes c3 and, and checkmate. And bishop anywhere else, uh, even to e5, for example, uh, we would play king takes e3. Now, this would be a mistake. It allows the black king out. But king takes e3, and here we still do have uh, the immediate checkmate. Um, and if black doesn't sacrifice, then again, e4, and let's say we pin the bishop, e5, that's going to be checkmate. That This is actually checkmate on the board. Um, so that is our key idea. So because we've done such a good job, no matter where this bishop goes, here, and again, now it's relevant that someone uh, in the live audience pointed out, we don't have to react to bishop g7, because this is checkmate. We again just capture the pawn, threaten rook d1, and then we have this very easy checkmating idea, which takes far less than 290 moves. Uh, so of course, the, the best that black can do now is to continue to pass. We take two turns with our rook before returning back to d1. And then our king makes the long journey back to a6, or a5, and to b6. And we have completed the first cycle. We've achieved the same position, black to move. And black now has to, to move one of the pawns. Now, all we have to do is do that uh, about a dozen more times, like so, obviously. You all saw all of this. And, oh, black had a queen there for a second. Very exciting. Let's go back. That was fun. Yeah, so black zugged again. Now the pawns do have to start sacrificing themselves. And you can see that no matter what black does, he has to repeat. And I'm actually testing the bounds of Lee Chess studies here. They only let you import a PGN of 200 moves. So we have to go to part two, uh, where again, you're just repeating the same cycle. Over and over again, the h pawns continue to drop. Uh, king b6, the last h pawn falls. Very exciting stuff. Come back to d3, pass with the rook, go back to b6. Oh, and here we go. Yeah, finally, um, black throws in the towel. It doesn't really matter what order black does it here. You give the last pawn. Sorry. It's OK. It's not letting me edit that. Whatever, doesn't matter. Um, you give up the last pawn or you give up the bishop first. And either way, you end up here. Then finally, uh, white is going to sacrifice on d4. At this point, this is just the, the fastest checkmate. It's not crucial that you sacrifice. Or no, it is crucial that you sacrifice on d4. Otherwise, black is stalemated. Then finally, king b6 to keep the king from running, uh, forcing d3, after which we just queen. Take, take take, and this is checkmate on the board on move 290. Uh, that last bit there is, uh, again, the, the only other unique part. So you have that unique part at the beginning of the puzzle where you have to get the black king situated on d6. Then you have your cycle for about 280 moves. And then you have the last few moves of the puzzle, sacrificing the rook. Otherwise, it is stalemate. Uh, king b6 to keep the king from running, to keep all of these pieces trapped. 
And then finally, d3, queens, um, threatening queen a3, I believe. So it takes, takes, and takes with, with mate. And there you go. Now you've all solved mate in 290. Uh, and incredibly, yeah, this, this was composed way back in 1860, uh, which is why I wanted to start with this. So that's how you end up with these incredibly long chess puzzles. Almost always, it's because there is some sort of, of cycle going on, like, like this, where you end up in, in Zugzwang. Now, we're going to see some other puzzles in a moment here. Uh, what was that, Oliver? Isn't he going to claim 50 move rule? Isn't he going to claim the 50 move rule? So I might be wrong, but I don't think that we ever break the 50 move rule here. I think, um, let's, let's see. So c4 captures. So this was our last capture on move 3. And then black is forced to move the pawn on move 21. And I think our cycle is, let's see how many moves our cycle is. So this is the first, first move. Takes us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 moves to, to force the next pawn move. So this position, winning even with the 50 move rule. Uh, but it's kind of a moot point. Position's illegal anyways. Uh, but what I was saying is, once we sort of broaden our horizons a little bit, we're going to find that um, there are positions that are incredibly long checkmates that do not rely on these cycles. Um, now, I also wanted to highlight this position. Uh, from what I can find, this is the single longest checkmate composed by a human um, that, is, that, has unique, that is unique and is legal. This is a legal chess position, uh, from, from what I can tell. Now, Maybe the, the serious problem solvers out there or problemists will, will correct me on this if I'm wrong. But this one by Walther Jorgensen and Thema Dan, uh, Dan, Danicum uh, in 1982. I believe this is the longest unique solution legal chess puzzle uh, out there. Um, and this one, again, is, is going to rely on those, those sort of cycles. I'm not going try to try to solve this one with you. I just wanted to highlight this one. And the idea, of course, is you start with bishop h2, queen uh, e3, and then we get in this little dance with the king and the queen. And then we can finally make a move. And then we repeat the cycle, the little dance, and then make a second move. And then we repeat the cycle, uh, making sure that black can't actually touch any of the pieces. Both the knights are paralyzed because knight f6 or knight e5 would be mate if they didn't defend. The bishop and rook can't legally move. These pieces can't legally move. And so you have to move the king. And this time, what we want to do is bring our king to d1. And I believe this threatens checkmate if king f3, so black can no longer pass. And this is the cycle that we get caught in. So we force black to move the pawn. Now we come back and do this again. And finally, we take the pawn. Now we need to do this over and over again, forcing the pawns down the board. Um, by the way, I should probably point out first that uh, way back here, black uh, or white should, should not capture the pawn, because then this is check. So that, that's why we need to force the pawns down the board in the first place. Uh, and so long story short, uh, 200 moves later, you get to here where the final pawn is. And then from here, you continue the cycle. And finally, 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 you play king d1 for the last time. Black is forced to move one of the pieces. This would be checkmate in one. So knight f8 instead. And it's checkmate in, in two. And there you have it. That one, I believe, is the longest uh, checkmate composed by a human that is legal and has a unique solution. Oh, it has a unique solution, so, so you can prove that there's no sword in mate. Yeah. Um, no, so that there's no duels, as far as I know. I might be, I'm, I think that there are no dual solutions, meaning every move is forced uh, by, by white. If white were to deviate at any moment, then the solution would be longer. Whereas there are other positions that are longer than mate in 226, 
but white has like a choice at some point. You can play either like king c4 or king b4, and they are both made in, in the same number of moves. Okay, so, so there's no shorter mate, right? Yeah, there's no, well, not only is there no shorter mate, yeah. there, that's, that's always, uh, or I should say, is, is usually true, uh, but there's also no alternative mates that are the same length. Any alternatives here are going to take longer and not be, not be useful for white. Um, OK, so with that, I've had enough of real chess. Real chess is dumb. And I want to look now at this position. So this one, you know, I wasn't happy with, uh, with mate in, in 270. I just wasn't happy. You know? So I, I wanted to, to search for longer. Uh, and to find longer puzzles, we are going to change the rules a little bit. So this is not actually a checkmating puzzle. If it were a checkmating puzzle, it would be very, very easy. You go c4 check. The king is in check. The king must move. And then queen d1 is mate. Uh, mate in two, not too bad. Uh, but instead, the goal of this puzzle is to uh, self-mate. Now, have you guys heard of self-mates before in the pu puzzle solving world? All right, so if you have not, the goal is to force black against his will to checkmate the white king. So black is doing everything in his power to not checkmate you. That is his goal. Your goal is to force, uh, force checkmate of your own king here with the white pieces. And again, what we see is that it's going to be uh, another cyclical sort of Zugzwang style, style thing. Now, again, I'm going to get you started on this one, but I, I wanted to show this puzzle because I think it's actually really, really uh, beautiful what, what has to be done here. So to start with, we have some preparatory moves where white is trying to, to capture some black pieces just to get started. And this is just here to sort of extend, extend the length a little bit. So to start with, we capture the knight, not on move two when it's checkmate, but on move three when black has a response. Then finally, we can bring our knight in take the bishop with check. Um, by the way, we're doing all these moves with check. Otherwise, this black queen would escape. Then we are repositioning the knight uh, with check again over to f1. Finally, check, 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 check. And uh, I think we go through our first little cycle here to come pick off this knight on b7. Black pawns are going this way, of course. And then finally, we're going to end up back here where we can play our, our first move. And so 40 moves into the puzzle, uh, nothing, just at the very start here, of course. Uh, white has finally captured all of the necessary pieces it, that white needs to capture uh, from black. And then we, we see sort of the, the core position here. So what's going on? Well, what's going on is that white has successfully entombed the black queen. Right? This, this queen has no path out. And if white is able to win the black queen, then white is going to have a, a pretty easy way to, to, to checkmate himself. Once the black queen is out of the picture, white doesn't really have anything to worry about and can go about checkmating himself in, in a number of ways. I think I, uh, no, I deleted the, that, that line where I showed it. But that's OK. Just, just trust me, once the black queen is gone, then uh, it's, it's smooth sailing for white. Uh, so now the task for white is to find some way to uh, make progress from, from here. So black is going to go king b2. We are going to go through this entire cycle one more time. And then the point is going to be made a little bit more clear. So yeah, 96 is important. And now let's try and find out how white is, is making progress here. So. First of all, let me explain what this little cycle is a little bit better. So the point for white is that he wants black to be completely immobilized aside from the move king b2. And that way, white has time to, to play a move. So after king b2, black, of course, is threatening to escape and, and do any number of annoying things. So we have to check. And we walk our queen up the board with checks. The point of getting to, to the g7 square is that allows us to finally check from the front on the g file. Once we do that, we can force this bishop back to b2. Then we walk our queen back down the board using the same little technique here. Again, black's pawns are going this way. 
Uh, we walk down the little staircase, and then finally we can repeat. And once again, we have another free move. So to start with, white plays this move knight e6. And now, let's see if you guys can come up with a plan uh, to, to make progress with white. So what does make progress mean? You're making progress if you can capture an annoying piece of blacks or make progress towards promoting a pawn. So let's see if we can come up with some kind of idea that makes progress here. So what might be useful for white? What might be useful here? Attacking the queen? Yeah, attacking the queen would be nice. Um, yeah, so how, how might you go about doing that? Knight yeah, so knight f4. And this is, uh, that, that's like, first of all, a fantastic idea. Uh, and there is just one problem with it. And the problem is, uh, and this is why I wanted to show this puzzle, is the cycle that we're using here requires a very large portion of the board to be open. Uh, we need the queen to be able to come to every one of these squares over to b7, so these squares have to be open as well, back to g7. And then we actually have to walk down this side of the board with the queen as well, right? Uh, that, that last part of our cycle there. Oop, I skipped to move 200. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, so once again, just to show, so we walk up the board. We're touching all of these squares. Then we need this uh, rank to be open. And then on the way back down, we're touching all of these squares. Um, and d3 as well, and d2 as well, in order to uh, repeat this cycle. So the problem with trying to step to knight f4 or knight g5 is that that's actually going to interfere with the queen. And you won't be able to. Uh, to repeat this cycle anymore. Uh, also, this bishop, for the moment, would, would be in your way. So let's say you try to do the same thing here. And then you come knight f4. Uh, well, first of all, you, you can't do it in this instance because you don't have the queen on d1, and so the queen can, can kind of escape. So you would need to do it with the queen on d1 sort of on this tempo. Uh, come here. But then I believe the point is king to b2. Or wait, maybe that's not the point. OK, let, let, me, let me put it on the board one more time. Check, check, check here. OK, knight f4. This is not an idea that I actually uh, came up with when I was looking at this on my own. So what's the deal with knight f4? OK, maybe, maybe black is just going to step out of the way. I think that's, that's likely the answer here. And once black steps out of the way, then unfortunately our cycle is, is going to break because we cannot step to the f4 square on our way back down the board. OK, does that make sense? Yeah. Took me a second to, to understand why. So once we achieve this position again, we need some other way to, uh, to continue on. So once again, we need all of these squares to be available for the, for the white queen. Also, we need these squares available so that this move is actually check, and these squares available here as well. So that's like almost the entire board. So what does that leave you to work with? What, what's really left to work with at that point? Well, OK. You're, you're thinking 300 moves ahead. <laughs> um, right now, we're actually, I'm just going to tell you, we're unable to, to win the black queen with sort of our, our material on the board. So what white's goal in this puzzle is going to be is to promote a pawn. Uh, and to recap, one more time, white's pawns are going up the board. 
black pawns are coming down the board. And our challenge is we are very, very tightly constricted because our cycle of forcing um, our cycle to give ourselves an extra move uh, is taking up so much of the board. We need so much open space on the board. And so with these very limited, with this very limited amount of space, the question is how can we, uh, how can we make any progress? How can we promote a pawn? So let's just start by eliminating the, the king's side here. So these pawns are needed to keep this queen entombed, right? We, we need, sort of need these pawns here. Not to mention if we move either of them, they're going to be interfering with the queen. So what's left are these pawns over here on the A and the C files. So let's focus on those and see if we can come up with a plan to promote anything. Yeah, Brian? Uh, uh, like knight, knight b8, c6, b8, a6? OK, you make a good point. Uh, and then what would you do after, after that? Which pawns are you promoting and, and how? Just to show, Brian was saying maybe this is a plan, um, avoiding all the important squares. And then get the knight out of the both knights out of the way, like I guess, um, bring, bring it back to like B8, and then the other knight, um, to, and then promote the A pawn. And then promote the A pawn. OK, you make a good point, which is not good, because it's incorrect, and I don't know why. <laughs> um, I think that we, we need this pawn on the board for some reason. I'm actually a little confused. Um, I don't know. Let's let's try it. Let's um, end here. Just just for the sake of uh, time, I'm I'm not going to do the whole cycle. We're going to just pretend that uh, Black is willing to play King B1 here. You know, normally you would go through the whole rigmarole of the cycle uh, to get this this position again. But yeah, let's see what's going on here. Why might this not work? Uh, okay, let's say you play Knight B8. And I try to continue the cycle here. Let's see if black is going to have any extra opportunities. And if you see why this doesn't work, feel free to shout it out. Let's see, check. Then we come this way. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, could you go back? Uh, yeah, how far? Oh, because you're not paying attention, Oliver. Um, our goal is to get the white king checkmated. It's a self-mate problem. OK. Um, so I mean, th these all have been only moves, unless I'm really missing something here. So yeah, what, what's the big deal? Why can't, we, uh, why can't we do this? It's an excellent question. I mean, is it, uh, does it take longer? No, it, it definitely does not take longer, from, from what I know. Let's see, it would be. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, this is very disturbing, Brian. This is very disturbing. I didn't expect this. I don't know. Let's see if the chat has any, any ideas for why this will, won't work. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Interesting. Well, we'll come back to this idea. I'll have to think on that. Um, because this does seem like it would work. It doesn't interfere with any of those important, um, important squares. And it does capture uh, the, the critical pawn. Uh, now, the only thing I can think of is maybe it's important that black has this, this c6 pawn for some reason. I, I don't know why. Uh, what was that? I mean, because I don't know the bigger picture. So is there... Yeah, so we'll, we'll come back to it. Um, so there, there is another way to come capture this pawn over here on, on a6. And that way, I'm just going to reveal, unless anybody has last second guesses. The king? 
Yeah, it, it's, it's with the king. So um, we come all the way over, get the knight out of the way, come capture this guy, and bring our king out of the way, and then we can promote the pawn. So that's, that's going to be our idea. So let's, let's jump ahead to, uh, to when we can actually do that. Um, of course, we play through the whole cycles here, moving our king one step at a time every time we get that free tempo. Then, of course, we can move our knight out of the way, which, yeah, here it's, it's important that you play knight, knight c8 and not knight c6. So it, it does have something to do with the c6 pawn being important. And where are we getting um, yeah, I, I think it has to do with the c6 pawn being involved in, in the actual checkmating position, which is probably why uh, either it doesn't work or it takes longer. Um, so again, we repeat the cycle. This is move 200. Have to move on to the next portion. Um, we repeat the cycle, take the pawn, repeat the cycle here, get our king fully out of the way, just to slow down. This is the position where we have the tempo. Then we can move the king. And of course, now we get to promote our pawn. So skipping ahead till our pawn gets promoted. That finally happens on move 320. We get our, our second queen. Uh, and now white, of course, is, is able to make a lot of progress. So I'm going to reveal a few more moves here before showing off the, the checkmate, which I'm going to ask you guys to find. Now our cycle is a lot shorter because it's a lot easier to do with with, uh, with a couple queens on the board. And yeah, finally, let's get the king to b4, get our knight out. And this is finally the position where, uh, with two queens on the board, white is able to, uh, to start harassing the, uh, the black queen. So we play king b4 in this position, which we, we normally haven't done historically. Uh, notably, king to b2 is illegal now. So black has to make some other kind of pass. And in, uh, in, the, in the best solution, queen g1 is the best that black can do. Then that allows us to finally check with the knight and move our queen over such that we can trade off the black queen. And now the rest is going be, gonna to be history. So I guess let's try and find out what happens if black doesn't play queen to g2, or queen to g1. Uh, I suppose you can play h3, but uh, white can just play a pass, and then you play queen g1 anyways. Um, and then you get the exact same line, where we check, do everything with check. Uh, notably, don't play queen d1 here, because it would checkmate black. So you go queen d2, then you get the black queen off the board. And now finally, Let's see if you guys can find, uh, can find the checkmate from, let's see, from this position. OK, white to move and get himself checkmated. And no cheating here. You can do it in just two moves. Two moves are all you need. Queen d7. Yeah. Okay, black's going to just move. Black, black will promote, actually. By the way, while you're thinking about this, I don't think I ever mentioned this. Uh, you know, everybody loves hearing me pronounce names. I have no business pronouncing. This one was composed by uh, Andrei uh, Stetsenko back in 2016. So pretty new, pretty new. Uh, and according to Wikipedia, this is the longest self-mate puzzle out there. But uh, I'm going to have something to say about that. I think Wikipedia uh, either might be wrong or uh, someone with more knowledge than me can, can correct me afterwards. All right, white to move and self-mate in two. And I mean, how can you guys not get it? I, I, we've, we've done 357 of the 359 moves. Come on. Yeah, Brian? Uh, 
Uh, and what is the checkmating move? And you want your knight on the c3? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe on the other The other right? Knight a3, king b2, queen d2. And correct. This is, in fact, checkmate. Uh, so there you go. According to Wikipedia, longest self-mate out there. Um, and it's that simple. It's that simple. You just re repeat the cycle uh, a ton of times. If I can jump to where I had everything highlighted. So I think it's because we, we, I mean, we needed a king all the way over there anyway, so it's probably faster to take the pawn with the, with the king because it has to. Yes. It has to so, so that might be the case. Um, but what I wanted to point out here is uh, if after king f8, if black were to sacrifice the queen here, there's actually an entirely different uh, self-mate that you end up going for, which I don't have the, the line inputted anymore. I think I had that on a separate, uh, on an earlier version of my little study here. But just to show you what that looks like, I'm going to play bad moves for black that are very cooperative. But if black sacrifices the queen early, uh, what white actually goes for um, is, and again, the, the moves I'm playing are ridiculous, but what white goes for is something like this, where if I can just get my queen out of the way, which is surprisingly difficult. OK. Let's say my queen's out of the way. What you want to do is get your king over here, and you would move this knight with check. Um, and you would keep this bishop here for, for this entire thing. You get the king over to f1. You force black into stalemate. And then finally, you would check the king around the board until he asked to come to f3 which is easier said than done. Until he has to come to f3, you promote this pawn, and then you play queen g2. And so the, the point of that line, uh, obviously that's not how you actually force it to happen, but you can force it to happen, and it happens a lot faster than move 359, which is why black should not go for this line. But the point is there are other uh, self-mates available on the board. It's not like you have to do this thing over here on, on the on the uh, on the B file, um, and so that that's why I'm a little bit confused. I, I don't know why this plan is no good, but I, I assume what you said is correct. Where it's just faster if we have the C pawn and we can get mated on B4, and we can't really force that um, with the queen on the board. Um, so interesting. So with that, uh, there are two positions I, I want to show you to end off on. We're not going to try to solve either, but uh, I was hyping up. Uh, all these puzzles. But of course, computers, once again, have far outmatched humans in finding the longest chess puzzles ever. Uh, and the seven-man table bases uh, have found a position. Uh, this is that position. And white to move wins by force in 549 moves in regular chess. So I uh, wanted to highlight this one because it is the longest puzzle of any kind that I, I could really find while prepping for this. Uh, I'm sure there are longer if you really broaden your horizons and include you know, like fairy chess pieces and ridiculous things. But this position, in a regular old chess, white to move wins in 549. Uh, and to prove it, the first six moves are all pretty forcing. Um, you go g7, and then with this bishop on f6, the best you can do is promote to a knight uh, to avoid losing your queen. And then after king to e6, I don't know if we can show this on the stream, Ben, but the table base shows queen h3, distance to the next capture, is 1,028 half moves. So there you go. Uh, if anybody wants to go through and put in all 1,028 half moves, or what is it, 514 full moves, um, that's when the next piece gets captured, and then white ends up going on to, uh, to checkmate from there. So once again, Computers just totally outmatching the humans. Even with our stupid Zugzwang cycles, we can't create a position uh, like, like this, where it's white to move and win in 549. So there is this position. And then this is where I am challenging um, the viewers at home uh, to, to help me out with something here. Because 
in my, you know, admittedly not, not the most thorough research, I came across this position, uh, which was composed by William Schinkman back in 1907. And uh, I just found this on like, there's like a Google, you know, book archive of it. And then I found it on some like, you know, online library thing. Maybe I'll, I'll post a comment after, after the class here on the YouTube video so other people can see it as well. Um, but William Schinkman published this. And he says that this is a self-mate in 418 moves. And I went through some of the lines. And what, what he was saying seems to make sense. Obviously, we know more about self-mates in 2021 than we did back in 1907. So I'm assuming he was wrong for some reason. And at some point in history, this got refuted as a puzzle. But if true, this would then be the longest self-mate that, uh, that I know of. It's far, far longer than that 359 move cyclical thing. And just to show you the idea here, basically the way that this puzzle works is we slowly but surely force this knight to move around the board. Uh, first, I believe in the solution, he forces it over to h7 so that it's out of the way. Then uh, he uses discover checks to move the king one square at a time over to h6. Then he forces this knight to come out to h3. And then lastly, I'll, I'll show you the finish and how it all comes together uh, once White has officially organized all those pieces. But just to give you an idea of how it works, I'm going to show you the line that he gave that moves this knight the first square. Then I'm going to show you the finish as well. So to start with, every move played is a check. Otherwise, you know, black can, can do something annoying. Um, he forces the king all the way out to the A file. And then eventually, the key point here is that he gives queen A4, which would be checkmate if not for knight A5. And that's the mechanism that he was using to move the black pieces slowly across the board. So with that in mind, he uses similar uh, you know, mechanisms like that to force uh, this position, where we finally have our king over here on H6. We have the black knight in perfect position. And then from here, he is able to force the king over to the queen side, using checks to maneuver the bishop to the perfect position, uses a discover check again to move the bishop out to h1, and then once again uses a discover check with checkmate to force the black rook over here. And then all that's left to do is bring the king to f6, force the knight to move, and we will have successfully self-mated ourselves. And he does that quite simply by checking the king over, queen e4 check, queen f4 check, uh, no, nothing to do for black besides take the queen and checkmate white. So again, I found this on like a pretty shoddy like pamphlet looking thing on some like internet archive. And probably at some point in history, it got refuted as not the longest self-mate. But that is the longest uh, claimed self-mate that I could find out there. So if there's any self-mate historians watching the video, let me know what's wrong with William Schinkman's self-mate in 418. And if there's nothing wrong with it, update Wikipedia, because Wikipedia is wrong. Uh, OK, so hopefully you guys enjoyed some of these incredibly long chess puzzles in honor of you know, all the fun puzzles getting published out there for December. Uh, I had a lot of fun looking through these and trying to understand some of the nuances. Uh, and I would love if you guys at home have some favorite puzzles that you would like to share as well. But uh, these are sort of the limits of the chess pieces. It's hard to make puzzles that go much longer, longer than this. Uh, OK, with that, we've got uh, Grandmaster Alex Shevelov coming in next to uh, teach Insane in the end game. Uh, so stick around for that. It's probably going to be a lot more helpful to your actual chess than this class was. But I wanted to share some of the beauty of chess uh, on this Tuesday night. OK, as always, my name is Caleb Denby. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, and I will see you guys next time.